Well, good morning and welcome back. I'm joined by special guest, Greg Gianforte. Thanks for waking up with us today. Justine, good to be with you. Of course, glad to have you. And first question, so the question everyone's been asking since even before you've announced that your campaign is why. Why have you decided to step back from Congress and make a second try at the governor's office? Well, I, I, it's really an honor to serve Montana. Uh, I reached out and spoke with a lot of folks and because of my business background, I got a lot of encouragement to bring that business experience to Helena so that we can help more people prosper. We need more high wage jobs here in Montana. We've seen the positive effect of having a business person in the White House. Uh, I will bring business experience to Helena uh, to get government working for the people again. So was there any disenchantment with the opportunities to affect change when you're one of only 400 plus members in the House? Well, I, I'm pleased with the results we got done in Washington. We've lowered taxes, we've peeled regulations back. I've gotten reforms signed into law that help us manage our forests, giving authority to local county commissioners. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the, the, the governor's office has been in single party rule for 16 years. And a lot of the work that the legislature does pro-business legislation ends up in the trash can in the governor's office. In fact, our current governor has been bragging about how many bills he's vetoed. Uh, I'd like to work with the legislature on a bipartisan basis to help Montana prosper. So do you feel that you might be a better fit for state government than Congress? Well, I've enjoyed Congress and we've gotten a lot done. Uh, I am a chief executive. Uh, that's what I've done my entire career. And I think the state needs a CEO. So uh, if the people of Montana want me, I look forward to serving in that position. How are you viewing the GOP primary, um, the GOP primary stakes uh, running against Tim Fox, especially? Well, in this uh, primary and in the general, of all the candidates on both sides of the aisle, I'm the only one with business experience. It's actually created high wage jobs here in Montana, and that's the vision I want to bring. Montana has so much potential, uh, but we need a business leader. Uh, in the governor's office to make sure we can reach that potential. So is, is that kind of your number one uh, issue that you want to tackle as governor? Well, my campaign? number one priority is more high wage jobs. It's often said that Montana's biggest exports are beef, grain, and our kids. Mm -hmm. As a father of four, three of them aren't here in the state anymore. And I know I'm in the same boat with a lot of folks. I want to create opportunities so that Montana's can prosper here and Montanans who are living away can come home if they want to and prosper back here in the place they love. And on Monday, you visited the Trapper Creek Job Corps, which you fought to keep open. So what are your thoughts after your visit and what did you hear from those who use and work at that program? Well, that was my second visit to Trapper Creek and I, I'm a big believer in that program. Uh, we have supported trades education. These are young people who are trying to turn their life around. Uh, and become productive members of society. We should be encouraging that. It's also a huge economic engine in the Darby area down in Ravalli. Uh, so uh, I was pleased it was kind of a, a little victory lap after going to bat for uh, Trapper Creek. And that was a bipartisan effort. I mean, Senator Tester, Senator Daines, and myself also all raised our voices very loudly to protect the Job Corps in Anaconda and in Trapper Creek. And then another issue you've talked about is combating illegal robocalls. So talk about some of the um, things that Congress has been working on and what you hope to see in the future. We hate robocalls, <laughs> don't we? Yeah. I mean, they're, it's every day. 26 billion robocalls last year alone. It was up 50%. So I sit on the telecommunications subcommittee and I've introduced two bills now. One uh, gives consumers more con uh, f access to free apps mm -hmm. to block robocalls. Also gives tools to telecommunications and law enforcement to pursue people that are engaging in robocalls. Uh, the FCC also recently uh, executed an order that eliminated a billion robocalls. But we've got a lot more work to do, and we're going to stay after this because we have to be able to answer our phone. Yeah, that is true. You have to be able to answer your phone. And I did hear you must have got a good phone call that you got a moose tag. I heard about I that. I did. <laughs> I am so thankful. Uh, so looking forward to, I, I call, yeah, we'll, we'll carve out a little time Spending this fall. Spending some time in Montana. That'll be great. Well, uh, thanks for joining us here on Montana this morning and answering some of those questions for us. We'll be right back after the break. Russ will have your forecast.